Is anyone else bored of season five already? And I already know the answer to this question because I asked this question on Twitter and I got about 75 replies and almost everyone replied to it with a version of yes. And I thought to myself, well, you know, that is only my community. Let me look somewhere else. And I go on Reddit and I saw multiple posts about people basically complaining about the map and maybe expressing their disappointment about how they thought the map would play a little bit better and how they are getting a little tired of it already. And um, I think that sentiment is fairly universal throughout the Battlefield community. Of course, you'll have to let me know in the comments section down below. But I think, I think everyone, or at least more people, are being hit by the reality that Season 5, no matter how good it might be in its entirety, it, it's still just not enough content to tide people over. And I think people are getting hit by that a little more. Because one map... Man, I mean, that is simply brutal. And there only being one map in Season 5 is compounded by the fact that there are just constantly these 24-7 playlists that you play at the beginning of the season. And I think those 24-7 playlists might be doing more harm than good because while I understand why people would want to play the new map because they want to try it, I think a 24-7 playlist at the beginning of the season actually just makes people get tired of the new map more quickly. Then you have to take a step back and look at the other content coming in Season 5, and this is relatively the same compared to the other seasons, and I believe every season has suffered from this, by the way. Um, take a step back and look at it. The new weapons that are added, yeah, they're new, but they don't- they aren't really that interesting, are they? They don't really have their own unique identities. It's just sort of a mishmash of jumbled around stats, and maybe they'll add a weapon that is slightly better than everything else in a new season. Uh, it doesn't really have its own unique traits. Like, if you look in Battlefield 4, the ACWR, that weapon had its own unique balance situation, where it had the fastest reload, I think fastest tactical reload or something for the carbines, I think it was 1.7 seconds. That made that weapon a bit unique, right? Whereas, I think the new 2042 weapons, even though they're new, are a bit sterile. They're all kind of the same. I think partially that's because of the gunplay. I think the gunplay of 2042 uh, maybe takes away from some of the identities of the weapons. Uh, they don't feel any different from one another. But the sound, they sound very sterile in comparison to, say, something like the Battlefield 3 G3A3, which has a legendary sort of, like, ka sound when you shoot it. I can hear it right now while I'm talking about it in my head. And then, of course, the vault weapons, which aren't new weapons at all, they're just repurposed weapons from Portal. And while they're technically new to the base game, again, they suffer from the same thing. I don't necessarily think they're anything interesting. And then you have to look at the fact that the other content that is coming in Season 5 is coming much, much later. And if people are talking about being bored with Battlefield 2042 Season 5 already, then, of course, this explains the consistent phenomena of people coming back to the game to try se to try a new season, then they consistently leave, and then they only come back to play updates. This is why Battlefield 2042 hasn't seen its quote-unquote massive comeback like some other YouTubers would have you believe. In fact, the, the comeback has been relatively mediocre, and it's been mediocre as a result of the lack of content. People come back, they see what is new, and there's nothing to tide them over, so they simply leave and play better games. And this is where the conversation stems into talking about how they support Battlefield games, whether it be live service, premium, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I don't really necessarily think that matters at all. I think what matters is, do they have their heads up their asses, right? Do they understand the problem that stems from having that little content per season? And that's the most important thing. Because if Dicey A gets it in their head, that they can get away with one map per season and they do the same thing in the next Battlefield game, I absolutely promise you without a shadow of a doubt, the same result will happen to the next Battlefield game that happened to Battlefield 2042. It will die in release, it will lose mass quantities of interest, and nobody will care about the game when it gets updated. Now, I think this time around, especially with Battlefield 2042 and the way it released, if they didn't learn anything from that, then I think we can kiss the franchise goodbye. I think it's pretty safe to say and this is coming from me, by the way, the people that think I'm negative all the time, so listen very carefully if you're one of those people. I think it's almost impossible for them to make the next Battlefield game worse than Battlefield 2042. I think Battlefield 2042 suffered from a unique set of absolute incompetency uh, from leadership, misplaced priorities, 
a global pandemic, which may or may not have actually caused any problems because I hear from one side, oh, they work from home, so it didn't actually matter. Then I hear from another side, oh, that's bullshit. The other side's wrong. So I I'm not even going to pretend I'm educated on that. And feel free to argue about that in the comment section. Uh, I just thought I'd bring it up because, I mean, I guess it did technically happen during the development cycle of this game, although we don't actually know if that actually mattered. Then expanding on the misplaced priorities part, apparently Battlefield 2042 at some point in its, develop in its development cycle wasn't even a Battlefield game. In fact, it was a Battle Royale that was changed into a Battlefield game, and that would explain uh, some partial aspects of the game, such as 128 players, and why the maps are giant wastelands that needed to be consistently reworked throughout the game's life cycle. But all of that stuff aside, I really do believe that the most important thing to take away from Battlefield 2042 is the gradual increase of DICE's competency throughout making the game. It, you can see this very clearly. The map that we got in Battlefield 2042 Season 5 was finally a map specifically and only made for 64 players, completely removing the problem of making it compatible with the shitty 128 player mistake. On top of that, DICE has done a fairly good job with increasing the patch consistency of the game. I remember at the beginning of the game, patches were getting delayed, there wasn't much communication around the patches, and now they've sort of turned that around and have been extremely consistent with their communication and actually upgraded it consistently with the Battlefield communication Twitter, as well as their streams that they do, the dev blogs and the dev videos. Um, generally, if they can carry this stuff into the next Battlefield, I think that is the most important thing possible for the next Battlefield title. The other most important thing for the next Battlefield title is making sure that the people in charge, whoever they are, understand what went wrong with Battlefield 5 slash Battlefield 2042 and not making those same mistakes like DICE always seems to make. For instance, I think we can all agree if they made the correct decision to delay Battlefield 2042 for a full year, we would have a much different story on our hands with this game, potentially. Um, if they need to delay the next Battlefield game, they need to fucking have a big cock and say, hey, we're delaying the game so our game doesn't instantly die on release. I think that's pretty straightforward. But maybe the EA shareholders uh, will prevent that because they need their money and they've been told that the game is going to release in this quarter right now and any delay to their money is unacceptable, blah, blah, blah. But has anyone explained to them that if we don't delay the game, you will make less money in the long run because the game fails on release? Has anyone explained that? Has anyone explained that? All in all, Season 5 suffers from the same thing that every other season of this game has suffered from. Lack of content. And I hope to see the next Battlefield game rectify that in a substantial way. At this point, there is absolutely no excuse to release a game that is even half as bad as Battlefield 2042. You have the necessary feedback. It is right in your face. It's been in your face for over a year and a half now. And one could even argue over five years with Battlefield 5. And on top of that, you've hired new leadership and pretty much uh, video game Jesus Christ himself, Vince Zampella, and apparently he's going to save the franchise. So I, I believe it when I see it, and I, uh, I'm hoping for the best, and that's where I'll leave it. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Hopefully the next Battlefield game will make a better community and uh, just have a better experience for all of us. I really do believe that the gaming community needs Battlefield to be good. A lot of people are clamoring for a good Battlefield for years, and I do believe that uh, it's about time they deliver. Thank you.